Welcome to Faith Therapy. In this session, I want to talk to you heart to heart, and I want to talk about decision making. Decisions don't always come as easy as they may seem to some people. Have you ever found yourself in the middle of making a decision, but you don't know what direction to head? You don't know if this is the step that you need to take or if you need to just kind of jump on the bandwagon and do everything everyone else is doing? Or should you really be kind of like the lone wolf and take a complete opposite direction? And then you're left wondering, did I even make the right decision? And why did I make this decision? If this sounds like anything that you are dealing with right now, I want to let you know that this session is going to equip you to make those hard decisions or even those simple decisions that you're just being hesitant about. So with that said, let's go into this session. So as we talk about decision making, I want to focus on one decision that I have personally chose to make just today. And that decision is to stop shopping at Target. Yeah, I said it and I'm going to repeat myself. I have decided to stop shopping at Target. For how long? I don't know. But I made this decision not based on emotions, not based on the bandwagon, not based on someone else telling me what I should or shouldn't do. I made this decision based on one thing, conviction. But there's too many believers that are living their Christian life based simply on emotion, based simply on their conscience, based simply on a moral compass. All of those things are good, but at the end of it, you really need to rely on the Holy Spirit. There are the ways that the Holy Spirit is going to lead you that doesn't make sense to nobody else. And then there's ways that the Holy Spirit is going to lead you that may offend other people. Why would I say that it offends other people? Because maybe they themselves are not ready to make decisions the way you are. I made a decision to stop shopping at Target. Now, why is this a big decision? Because if you've been following me on social media, you know that I love my Target days, my little Target trips. I looked forward to them. I enjoyed them. Going in there, messy bun, leggings, coffee in my hand. It was a whole event for me, right? But not no more. And I had to make this decision not based on social media, not based on a bandwagon, not based on what someone told me. I made this decision based on one thing and one thing alone, and that is conviction. You see, as a believer, we are given the gift of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is the spirit of God that we get when we get saved, and the Holy Spirit leads us and guides us in all things. He ought to lead and guide us in all things. The Holy Spirit shows us things that honor or dishonor God. The Holy Spirit will lead us in decision-making if we listen to his guidance, and we are obedient in what he directs us. The Bible says that we all have free will. So I know many of you can think, well, it's not that big of a deal. You know, we see LGBT stuff everywhere we go. Correct. You do see it everywhere you go. But do you partake in it? And the difference is that Target has made it public that these clothing items that they're selling, one, are targeting small children. Two are made by a satanic person. So with that information, I have to make a decision to either pursue and continue shopping there or to say, you know what? I cannot continue to shop there because now I know what stance they have taken. I have been made aware of what stance they have been taken. And this is a scripture where it says in the New Testament that everything is available to us, but everything is not going to benefit us. It goes on to say that we can eat of all types of foods, but if you know that a food has been offered to a God or to an idol, then do not eat of it. But then again, everything that we eat is sanctified because we're covered by the blood of Jesus, right? Decision-making can become an inward fight between yourself, right? Should I or should I not? Do I or do I not? And these things can become emotionally stressful for you. So this is one decision that I think that as a Christian mom, as a Christian woman, you need to get in, kind of lean in, because I think that you need to listen to this. I think this is going to benefit you and give you peace of mind. What decision is that? The big decision of 
continuing to shop at Target. I'm going to let that settle in for a little bit. Now, am I telling you not to shop at Target? No, that's not what I'm saying. Am I telling you to go ahead and shop at Target, ignore everything? No, that's not what I'm saying either. What I'm saying is I am going to help you make a decision that is going to benefit you as a mom and as a believer. How do you make these decisions? We live in a world that is full of sin. We live in a world that is full of darkness. So where do you draw the line? Where do you decide if you're being either you're being too fanatic or you're being too lenient? Either you're being too, quote unquote, religious or you're being, quote unquote, too carnal. Those type of decisions can really boggle you down because one, you want to honor God. The desire in you should be to honor God. But then again, you live in this world that it seems that everywhere you look, evil is present. It feels that everywhere you go, sin is abounding. So what do you do as a believer? Do you shut yourself in your house and don't go out? Absolutely not. But what you do is realize that there are some things that are in your availability and your control to deny, reject, or refuse. Everywhere we go, we're going to be faced with these type of decisions. Everywhere we go, we're going to have an opportunity to make a stance against sin or to just kind of fade into the crowd and let people live. There's a saying, live and let people live, right? And I believe that as a believer, we should take that stance. I know before you come at me in the comments, let me tell you what I mean. God is a God of free will. God has given us all a free will. God doesn't force us to serve him. God doesn't force us to follow him. God doesn't even force us to love him or believe in him. He gives us free will. Everyone has the will, free will to decide as they wish. But there are consequences and there are things that will help us understand what God's desire and plan and purpose is for our lives. The Bible says that God told the people of Israel today before you, I give you two decisions to obey and be blessed or to disobey and be cursed. But the decision was completely up to them. And these are the type of decisions that we as believers are faced in our everyday life. How do you make these decisions? How do you make these decisions without feeling like you're being overly religious, right? I know that a lot of women don't like making decisions because they don't want to be seen as religious. Well, the bottom line is, ladies, you shouldn't be religious. If you're being religious, you need to stop. I'm going to say it again. If you're being religious, you need to stop and stop it now. God didn't call you to be religious. God called you to have a relationship with him. And a relationship is an emotional relation. In other words, you feel what that person feels. You will love that person because that person has loved you. You respect that person because that person has respected you. It is a relationship. And a relationship, all of your emotions are involved in it or ought to be involved in it. And your desire ought to be to please this other person. So if you're being religious, then you're just following a set of rules, not caring about the emotional part of that person, as long as you can check off the boxes and go about your way. But God didn't call you to do that. God called you to have a relationship with him. And the way that you and I have that relationship with him is through the Holy Spirit. The Spirit of God, we receive him when we accept Jesus Christ as our Lord and our Savior. We are gifted with the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit is what allows us to connect with God, what allows us to feel what God feels, to allow us to sense the direction of hesitant or the direction of leap by faith. It's the Holy Spirit that will lead us to live a life that honors God. So in making this decision for myself and guarding Target, 
I had to make a stance and I made a decision not to shop there anymore, at least for the time being. What do I mean? Is that I know and I have made and I have been made aware that for the month of June to display LGBT clothing, not just for adults, but for children. And on top of that, this clothing line is made by a well-known self-professed satanic person. And I believe the tag says Satan, Satan accepts all pronouns or something like that. But the bottom line is that as soon as I heard that, I said, whoa, this has crossed the line. This has really crossed a line that I cannot continue to move forward in. I had to draw the line and say, I cannot be, I cannot partake in this knowing what I know. You may say, but I'm not going there to buy that clothes. I'm not going to go in there and shop for that. I'm going in there for the cute little things, for the for the little Starbucks. I'm going in there for the snacks. I'm going in there for the shoes. Yes. But I want you to understand this. I'm not here to tell you what to do. I'm not here to tell you what decision you should make. I'm here to teach you in a biblical perspective what the word of God says. And the word of God says that the Holy Spirit is your teacher, your comforter, your guide. Let him guide you in the decisions that you make for your life. Because when you allow the Holy Spirit to guide you, I assure you of this one thing, ladies, you're going to live in peace, mental peace and emotional peace, because you're going to know that everything you do, you do it to honor God. And when you do things that do not honor God, you get conviction. You get an unsettling in your spirit that tells you, stop, that tells you that's not right, that tells you that doesn't honor God. And it's that tugging of our heart, that conviction that we ought to listen to and surrender and walk in the ways of obedience. And when you walk in the way of obedience, your decision making becomes a lot easier because the decision is no longer simply based on things you see, but it's based on things you can't see at the present time that will eventually result in the physical. I'm going to repeat that. Your decision making is no longer going to be based just on things that you can see, but they're going to be based on things that you cannot see at the present time that will eventually affect you in the physical inward decisions, spiritual decisions that you and I are going to be making for the rest of our lives until one, we die or Jesus comes back for us. But I want to encourage you ladies that when you make decisions, make them based on the leading of the Holy Spirit. And the way that you know it's the Holy Spirit is one, conviction, and two, it will always go according to the word of God. The Holy Spirit will never contradict the word of God. It will always confirm the word of God in your life. So with that said, ladies, I want you to think about this and I want you to make a decision in your life to stand up and honor God in the little things and in the big things, to stand up and honor God in the places that you go and the places that you don't go, to stand up and honor God in the relationships that you have and the relationships that you need to end. There's so many decision-making ladies that you are going to be doing and I want you and I want you to do them under the guidance of the Holy Spirit. So thank you for joining along on this session. I hope that this was informative for you and I pray that every decision you make from now on, you listen to the voice of the Holy Spirit. If you're facing difficult decisions in your life right now, decisions that are really eating you up inside and they're difficult for you to deal with and they're making you lose your sleep. They're causing you to continuously feel sick, physically sick. They're decisions that are tearing you up inside and you don't know what to do and you need some type of direction. Faith therapy one-on-one -on -one sessions are here to equip you to make decisions based on biblical principles and based on honoring God. 
So with that said, I'm going to put the website here. If you are going through anything, I encourage you to connect with Faith Therapy. Let Faith Therapy equip you in a biblical perspective to not just live a life that's resilient, but to live it balanced and with peace of mind. With that said, ladies, stay tuned for the next video, and I'm looking forward to meeting you.